everyone. Welcome to Saturday Morning Yoga. I'm Jamie and it's great to see you here. What a great way this is to start the weekend, getting everyone together to enjoy some fun family yoga time. Now today's adventure has us meeting someone who's very, very grumpy. He's very annoyed about all these new creatures that keep moving into his field, so he decides to build a gate. But really? Is this a good idea? Wouldn't, wouldn't life just be so much more fun if he got along with everyone? Well, let's go and see what happens. Hello everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. But first, we're going to take a look through the cosmonoculars and find out who we're meeting today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Oh, look at the colours. Oh, look at that, the pattern spinning around. Oh, can you see that? What is it? It's a hair. It's Mr Hoppet the hair. Oh, what's Mr Hoppet doing? He's doing yoga. He's doing dragonfly pose. Oh, that's very exciting. Now, Mr Hoppet the hare has recently been getting a bit grumpy about how busy his field is getting. So we start in our hare pose. Coming onto your knees, everyone. Crisscross our fingers behind your back and stretch your shoulders. Now folding your body all the way forwards, lifting your ears up above your head like you've got two long hair, hair ears. Now, Mr Hoppet the hare notices that his field is super duper busy. There's lots of activity in the hedgerows, coming all the way back up to sit. There are bees are buzzing, sitting with your legs crossed. Now we're going to put our fingers over our ears. We're going to hum and close our eyes. Here we go. Um... There are birds tweeting everywhere. Let's do our bird tweety pose. Wrap your arms around yourself and lift and lower your elbows as we go. Tweet, 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 tweet. And there are beetles scrabbling around on their backs willy-nilly, coming into our beetle pose, lying on your back, bending your knees all the way down and holding onto your feet. Now, have a good scratch on your back. Ooh, that feels nice. But Mr Hoppet the Hare has just about had enough. Coming up to stand, everyone. He brings his little paws onto his hips as he says, all these creatures coming in here, they think they own their place. But I was here first, so it's my field. Then Mr Hoppet the Hare squats all the way down, crouching down, and he strokes his furry chin as he thinks about what he's going to do about it. I know, I'll build a gate and then I'll guard it and I'll stop anyone coming in that I don't like. And he gets to work building a gate, coming into gate pose up onto your knees, take your leg to the side and your arm up to the sky and then leaning all the way over to check that it opens. Oop. Now more importantly, does it close? Let's bring two knees back together again, our other leg to the other side, our arm up to the sky and check that it closes for Mr Hoppet. Oop. Now he gets to work making a sign for his gate. Sitting on your bottoms, your legs out in front of you, Mr Hoppet uses his foot to write. So see if you can get your foot over your arm and use your toes to write. He writes the words, no trespassing. Then he attaches some string. Coming up to stand, turning to the side, crisscross your fingers to attach your string and then folding all the way forwards to hang the sign over the gate. Now, rolling back up to stand, 
Mr Hoppet the hare takes his hare position to guard the gate. Down onto our knees, everyone. Crisscross your fingers, stretch your arms and folding all the way forwards, taking your big ears up above you. Next along comes a frog. Coming all the way back up into our frog pose. Up onto your tippy toes, take your knees wide and take your hands in between your legs like froggy sticky fingers to hold yourself up. The frog does a big ribbity jump in the air. After three, one, two, three, ribbit. Mr Hoppet the hare stops the frog by standing up and holding his paws up towards him. He says, stop right there, you. State your name and your business. Coming back into our frog pose, bending our knees, using our fingers for balance, the frog's a bit taken aback. But he says to Mr Hoppet, um, I'm Frank, I'm a frog, I hop, I croak and I swim. I, I like music, uh, rap music mostly, and I like dancing, hip hop, that sort of thing. And to prove it, he shows Mr Hoppet his singing and his dancing. Coming up to stand, bringing your heels together and turning out your toes and your hands to your hips. Now the frog, Frank, begins to bob up and down, bending and straightening his knees. And then he does his rap. Frogs go ribbit, frogs go croak. They leap in the air if you give them a poke, but leaping over lily pads is what we do best. So come on, all you froggies, put your leaps to the test. Then he finishes with the most ginormous ribbity leap over the gate. Coming all the way down into your frog pose. After three, big ribbity leap. One, two, three, ribbit. Cheerio. Mr Hoppet the hare stands up and he wobbles his face around Ooh, and he stamps his feet. Ooh, I don't know, why did he just hop over? I'm going to have to add to my sign now. No singing and no dancing. He sits down and he gets his pen out, using your other foot this time, bringing it up and over your arm to write no singing and no dancing. So now his sign says, no trespassing, no singing, and no dancing. And he gets back into his hair position to stand guard. Coming up onto our knees again, everyone. Crisscross our fingers, stretch them back, and folding all the way forwards. Next, a pigeon flies down. Coming all the way up, and let's come into our pigeon pose. Crossing your legs, everybody. Now, Take your leg out to the side and take it all the way back behind you like you're drawing a circle until it goes all the way back. Use your fingers to stretch up with your chest. Yes, like a pigeon. Now the pigeon could have just fluttered over the gate. She didn't need to stop here because she's a bird. But she, does, she doesn't want to go against the rules. She respects the rules. And so here she is, waiting for Mr Hoppet to let her in. Mr Hoppet stands up and holds his paws up at the pigeon. He says, stop right there, you. State your name and your business. Coming back into our pigeon pose, crossing your legs again, everyone. This time, take your other leg out to the other side. Draw a circle, taking it right the way back behind you so it's in a straight line, using your hands to lift yourself up. Our pigeon says, my name's Pamela. Pam for short, um, I'm a pigeon. So I fly, I build nests, and I coo. I also like telling jokes, because I like making others laugh. Would you like to hear one? Pan the pigeon thinks that this hare could really do with some cheering up, so she gets ready to tell him a joke. Right, I've got one. <laughs> what kind of key opens a banana? Mr Hoppet starts to laugh. Pam's on a roll. So she tells another joke. OK, I've got another one. Um, mm, oh yeah. What do you call a pile of kittens? A meowting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Hoppet the hare 
thinks this is the most hilarious thing ever. And so Pam the Pigeon takes this opportunity to fly over the gate. Coming up to stand with your feet together, everyone, your hands down. Now lift and lower your arms like you're a bird flying over the gate. Toodaloo! And coming back up to stand. When Mr Hoppet the Hare stops laughing, he wobbles his face. Ooh, and he stamps his feet. Oh, you don't believe that pigeon? She made me laugh with her jokes and she got over the gate. I'm going to have to add to my sign. So he gets to work adding to his sign, sitting with your legs out long. He takes hold of his leg again, lifting it up over his arm to write on his sign. No laughing and no joke. Now his sign says, no trespassing, no singing, no dancing, no laughing and no jokes. And he puts down his pen and puts the sign back on. He's just about to take his guard position again when all of a sudden a large shadow is cast over him. Standing in front of him is a sparkly, beautiful unicorn. Coming into unicorn pose, everyone. Stepping one leg forward, your knee down, tuck your toes and your hands to your heart. The unicorn swishes its tail around. It's the color of marshmallows and buttercups. And its horn, growing your arms all the way up above your head, looks to be made of pure gold. Mr. Hoppet the Hare stands up, not impressed, puts his paws up and says, stop right there, you. State your name and your business. We come into our unicorn pose on the other side. Onto one knee, tuck your back toes, hands to your heart and grow up tall, making your beautiful horn. This unicorn says, wow, my name is lovely. I am a unicorn. I spread joy. I bring happiness and love with my magical powers. Why, I can make rainbows with my tail. And to prove it to Mr. Hoppet, she does just that. With a swish of her tail, she makes the most beautiful rainbow appear, coming into rainbow pose. Onto two knees, everyone. Take your leg out to the side, your arms out wide. Drop down onto one arm, and then take your arm, top arm up and over your ear, like you're a beautiful rainbow. My goodness me. Then she does it again, swishing her tail another way, making a rainbow on the other side of the sky, coming to two knees again, arms wide. Take your leg to the side and drop down onto one hand. Stretch your top arm up and over your ear, making a beautiful rainbow. Wow! Mr. Hoppet the Hare is standing, looking at the beautiful rainbows, mesmerised by it. And so lovely, the unicorn takes this opportunity to leap like a dancer over the gate. Coming into our dancer pose, everyone. Stretch up with one arm, take your other hand to the side and see if you can hold onto your foot back behind you. Trying not to wobble. Now kick your foot into your hand. As you kick, 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 you come into your dancer pose. She comes up to stand and blows him a beautiful sparkling kiss. As she goes, Mr. Hoppet the Hare blinks like he's waking up from a dream and he wobbles his face. Ooh, and he stamps his feet. Ooh, that unicorn with her magic. I don't believe it. I'm going to have to add to my sign. And so he gets to work adding to his sign. Sitting on your bottoms, everyone, legs out long. He takes hold of his pen in his foot and he writes on the sign, no rainbows. So now the sign says no trespassing, no singing, no dancing, no laughing, no jokes, no rainbows. And Mr. Hoppet the Hare sits with his legs crossed, feeling rather grumpy at what's going on behind him. He holds his chin. Hmm, it's not fair this. He decides to have a peek at them all. He can hear them all laughing behind him, so he wants to see what they're up to. Sitting up nice and tall, bring one hand on your knee and your other hand behind you to sit up tall and twist to look around. There they all are, having a lovely time. That frog, he's laughing and jumping and dancing and singing. That pigeon, she's laughing and joking. 
And our unicorn, she's swishing her tail all over and making rainbows. Then Mr. Hoppet twists and looks the other way. Coming to the centre, bring your other hand onto your knee, your other hand behind you, and twist and look the other way. He looks at his sign, at what it says. No trespassing, no singing, no dancing, no laughing, no jokes, and no rainbows. Hmm. Then he turns to face the front, and he takes a big, deep breath. <sighs> he thinks about where he is and how he feels, and something in him changes. He doesn't want to be here all by himself, with no friends. And all of those over there, they're having fun. They're having a lovely time. He'd much rather be with them. So Mr Hoppet the Hare opens his gate. Coming into gate pose, everyone, up onto your knees. Leg to the side, arm to the sky, and open your gate. Ooh. He bunny hops over to them, bringing your hands down, tucking your toes, lifting your bottom, and let's do a hop. Ready? One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. He very kindly asks, would I be able to join you? I'm sorry about stopping you coming in. And they all open their arms wide to Mr Hoppet, giving him a big hug. Of course he can join them. They invite him to join them and sit on the crooked branch. Coming into your crooked branch pose, everyone. Arms wide, bring up your knees and then take them over one side, your head over to the other. And then switching sides, your legs over to the other side and your head to the other. Mr Hoppet the Hare is much happier here with his friends. We look back at the sign at the gate to see the sign has been taken down and the gate is now wide open. Slowly we bring our knees back to centre, sending them out long and our arms down by our side and we relax for a few moments. Wow, what a story about Mr Hoppet the Hare. He had to learn that he didn't own the field and that actually by accepting others, by sharing, his life became so much richer. He could have so much more fun. His life would be happier. We must all accept each other and love each other and celebrate our differences because by doing that, everyone's life and everyone's world will become a much better place. So wherever you go, stay open-hearted, share and accept and enjoy everyone's being so different and so wonderful. Slowly we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We bring our knees into our chest to give them a hug. We roll over onto our side to come up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the story about Mr Hoppet the Hare. What a great story it was, inspired by the wonderful David Sedaris. I hope you come back soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye! <laughs>to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. Here we help our minds stay healthy and happy and get some clever new skills to make our life the best that it can be. First, let's get comfy. 
sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed. Bring your hands to your knees and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> well done. Now let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's get some sounds. Ooh, look at all of these. Lots of great sounds to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel relaxed. Oh, look, a meadow. Let's have that. And let's see. Oh, yes, a lovely cuckoo bird. That's lovely. Now for the smell. Oh, wow. Here's a fun set of things. Rain smell. That's interesting. Bacon smell. Mmm, that'll make us hungry. Ah, yes. Let's go for the rose. Oh, it makes us feel all calm and lovely inside. I have a question for you. Can you think of a time when someone has been mean to you? Maybe a friend, a brother or sister, your teacher, or maybe your mum or dad. You have no idea why, because it wasn't your fault. But they say something mean to you, and it makes you feel really angry, and maybe a bit sad too. Afterwards, you might find yourself going and doing something mean to someone else, like hiding your brother or sister's favourite toy because you know how much it annoys them, or reminding them of how bad they are at maths, or telling someone at school that it's fish and broccoli for lunch when you know how much they don't like fish and broccoli. This is why people are mean. It's like a bug, the mean bug. Someone is mean to you and it makes you feel yuck. You've caught their mean bug. To get rid of the mean bug yuck, you chuck it at someone else by being mean to them. So they get landed with the mean bug yuck and it just keeps going. After that, for a little while, it feels better. Phew, I'm glad I got rid of my mean bug. All that yucky feeling. But unfortunately, it doesn't work as easily as this. Because the mean bug loves it when you are mean and will pop up again. After feeling better, you might start to feel bad for being mean. You might have a bad dream about it. Or go round with a moody, grumpy, snarly frown face feeling a bit grrr. You might be thinking that some people you know don't seem to feel bad about being mean. But because they are mean to everyone, you can be sure that no one will like them very much. And they probably won't have any friends. Which makes them even more sad and angry. Which makes the mean bug in them get even worse. But you have the power to stop it. To stop this mean bug when you spot it coming towards you. The next time someone is mean to you, just ask yourself this. I wonder why that mean person is so unhappy. What has made them so angry or sad that they want to be mean to me? If you do this, you won't feel nearly so bad. And you probably won't go and be mean to someone else. The mean bug will have melted into a puddle on the floor. I hope that helps you understand why some people are mean. And the next time it happens... You can decide to zap the silly old mean bug with your Zen Ninja mind skills. Keep up the practice to become a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den master. Bye bye! That 
was great. Well done, you. Now, let's get the volume turned up, get ready to sing, to dance, and enjoy ourselves in the yoga disco. everyone, welcome to the Cosmic Kids Yoga Disco. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, dancing and lots of fun. It's easy, just copy the moves that I do and enjoy the disco. This one's called Bunny Bounce, where we do our bunny hop move. Can you see the bunny bounce through the hedgerows and the fields? Then he stops and lifts his nose before kicking up his heels. We can all be bunnies too If we crouch down on our toes Wobbly get set go Let's strike that bunny pose Now to bounce, bounce, bounce You put your hands down, down Then you hop up your feet To the bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop beat Great, well done you! Now we have some yoga poses in the yoga pose universe for you to learn. It's great to become a master of these poses because when you come to do the adventures you'll be amazing. I hope you love it. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe Archer pose. Coming to sit on our bottoms with our legs out long. We take two fingers and put them between our big toe and our second toe. We draw our knee all the way back to our armpit like we're pulling on our bow. And then we reach forward with our other hands to touch our toes, taking aim at our target. After three, we're going to fire the arrow from our foot. Ready? One, two, three. Pew! Oops. Missed. Now, let's see if we can do it on the other side. Taking two fingers between your big toe and your second toe, drawing your bow back, bringing your knee to your armpit and reaching forward to those toes. Now, archer pose is very good for opening our hips, strengthening our core and giving our arms and legs a very good stretch. Let's try that target again. Reaching forwards for our aim. Ready? After three and then we fire. One, two, three. Yay, we did it! Woohoo! 
such a pose. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe. Telephone pose. Coming to sit on our bottoms and taking our legs out nice and long in front of us. Now, ring, 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 ring. That's the telephone. Let's answer it. Taking hold of one of your feet and holding it up towards your ear. Hello, Cosmic Kids here. How can I help you? Oh, hi. Are you? Yes, I'm very well. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, good, oh, good. Hi, hi. Are you? Oh, oh well, yes, I'd love to come. That would be amazing. Oh, yes. Bye. Bye. Let's put the phone down. We've been invited to a party. Oh, but I forgot to ask when it is. We'd better ring them back again. Let's take hold of the other phone now and dial the number. Beep, boop, boop, beep, 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 beep. Now, telephone pose is very good for stretching our hamstrings and opening our hips. Oh, hi. Yeah, I forgot to ask, when is the party happening? Oh, tonight. Righty-ho, then. Better get a move on. See you later. Let's put the phone down now. Putting the phone all the way forwards. This is so exciting. Better get my glad rags on. I think I'll wear my sparkly onesie. Well done, that was great. Now we have a lovely Peace Out for you. Peace Out is our guided relaxation series and it really helps your brain and your body totally calm and chill out. It's very, very good for you and I hope you feel wonderful afterwards. Peace Out. Friendly Wishes. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. Let's begin by finding a space for ourselves to lie down or sit. You can cross your legs and try to sit up nice and tall, or you can sit in a chair. If you are in a chair, place your feet on the floor and rest your hands in your lap. Imagine you have a bubble around you, so you are in your own special space. Take a moment now to get settled. Now, have a little moment to wriggle or fidget a bit, so you feel happy to spend some time being still and relaxed. Just like all things in life, we get good when we practice, and relaxing, being still, takes lots of practice. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Now, see if you can notice your breathing. I find it helps to slow my breathing down, just so it's easier to follow. The in-breath and the out-breath, in and out. Next time as you breathe out, let your eyes softly close, if they aren't already. Now you can allow your mind to make the pictures, like a dream. You're standing by a big lake, and all around it are trees and mountains. It's beautiful. You look at the water and see it's totally still. No breeze, no ripples. It looks like glass, calm, still water. It's peaceful here. In your pocket, you have collected some pebbles. You reach inside your pocket and hold one 
in your hand. It's smooth, cold and round. You take it out of your pocket and hold the pebble out in front of you over the lake. And you make a special friendly wish. A wish for yourself. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. You drop the pebble into the water. The ripples spread. Your wish has landed. You reach back into your pocket for another pebble, taking it out again and holding it over the water. This time you think of someone you like very much. A friend, a family member, someone who makes you happy. As you think of them, you send them your friendly wish. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. You drop the pebble again into the water, the wish spreading through the ripples where it landed, passing through the calm water. You reach again for another pebble, holding it in front of you over the water. Now you think of someone you know. You're familiar with them, but you don't have strong feelings about them. A neighbour, a shopkeeper, or someone you might see in the street. See if you can think of them and send them a friendly wish. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. You let go of the pebble and it drops into the water. The ripples spread again and your wish lands. You reach back into your pocket and find one final pebble. Taking it out, holding it over the water. Now think of someone you don't like very much. You're not so fond of them. Someone who upset you or you don't get on with. See if you can imagine them now in your mind. You do something amazing. You send a friendly wish to them. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. Dropping the pebble, your peace and friendly wishes spread, like ripples on the water. We imagine the whole world, and everyone in it, sending our friendly wishes to all. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be well. Your friendly wishes will make the world a better place. A place where we share love and kindness, no matter what. With that in our hearts, we have nothing to fear. No worries on our shoulders. We are together and stronger for it. Slowly now, begin to deepen your breath. Move and stretch your fingers, toes, arms, legs, and slowly open your eyes. We come back from our peace out time and bring with us some extra goodness from having done this. Take a moment to enjoy the feeling in your body and mind and be proud of yourself for doing something so totally amazing. Your friendly wishes will go far and will reach those who you thought about. This is Jamie saying peace out.